have a choice about. Have you ever felt, say, like, uh, say you have some kind of bad habit, some kind of automatic pattern? Maybe it's like, uh, you know, getting really mad at other motorists and giving them the finger. <laughs> and, and, like, you know that's bad. You want to stop doing that. And maybe you've been empowered by lots of New Age seminars, so <laughs> you, say, you say, why did I choose to do that? I chose to do that, right? I've got to take power from my choices, and I've got to become accountable. I chose to do that, and why? And I've got to stop. I've got to, I, I, I don't want to do that anymore, so if I take responsibility for it. But you know, when you get honest with yourself, at that moment, did you feel like you were making a choice? No. You feel, I mean, there it is, huh? You know, it just happens. Huh, camera? I gotta see a finger to the camera. Like, why'd I do that, you know? It just, it just happened. I, and, and sometimes when we do something really violent, um, you know, and start shouting at somebody, for example, it feels like, you know, later you reflect on it, like, that wasn't me. You know, it's like, it's like something took over me. Okay, why? Why, okay, the reason, that it feels like you weren't making a choice at that moment is that you weren't making a choice at that moment. Mm -hmm. What you did was the automatic action of who you've created yourself to be. It's mechanical. There, there's a whole big spiritual tradition that teaches the mechanicity of man, as they put it in those days that we are automatic beings. Now certainly that fed from the mechanistic view of the, of the universe, you know, articulated by Galileo and Newton, um, and Lemaitre especially, but there's something really true about this. And we experience it when we find ourselves doing something automatically, you know, like anything, you, you know, I know gossip, talking about people behind their back, that's bad, I want to stop doing that, and just find yourself doing that, almost powerless. And then we struggle against it, and we try to impose our will on something automatic. That leads to frustration, and it leads to, to castigation of the self. What's wrong with me? That what's wrong with me, we then use that to try to intensify the control by punishing ourselves, rejecting ourselves. I don't want to reject and punish myself. You know, that's it's like a threat. You know, don't dare do that again or I'll really be mad at you. You're bad. You're going to be really bad if you do that again. So intensifying this control. Or trying to motivate ourselves by, you know, if, you know today I didn't, I didn't do any of that stuff. I'm so good, you know, I can love myself today. And trying to motivate ourselves with rewards and punishments, which doesn't work. It doesn't work essentially because human beings are not slaves. We're not meant to be slaves. And we rebel against that kind of control. I won't go into that too much. There's a whole big piece on that. I want to stay focused on attention. Okay, because... <laughs> but you can remind me later if you want to hear more about um, that whole piece which includes the greatest fear of any mammal. Okay, so, if you do not actually, if you are not actually choosing when you do these things, and say you do want to change, you realize that giving motors the finger isn't who you are. It, it's not who you have become. How do you know that? Because it feels terrible, and it brings bad results that come quicker and quicker, the more out of alignment with who you've become that behavior is. Karma speeds up. You may have experienced this. And so you want to change, but, you, but eventually you realize that will is insufficient. And the reason is because you're trying to impose will on something that's not even a choice. So what is a choice? The only choice we make fundamentally is the choice of where to put our attention. Because we are attention. That's also why you, 
cannot actually divide your attention. You cannot actually put your attention on two things. Because it's really not something that you possess, it's something that you are. Now, you can, and if you, this is something that is a little bit counterintuitive, because you can be like, yeah, I can multitask, you know, I can have <laughs> the TV on, and I can be doing this, and I can be doing that, you know, and um, I can pay attention to more than one thing at once. But you actually can't. If you pay very careful attention to what's going on, or if you actually reflect on it right afterwards, that's actually what you're doing, um, you'll find that either when you pay attention to two things at once, either what you're doing is you're going back and forth really quick, kind of monitoring both, keeping tabs on both, or you're putting attention on the totality of the two things. Mm -hmm. But it's still a single attention. Mm -hmm. Whatever you put attention on becomes part of you. That's why some of you have maybe um, experienced with each other and with me very intense uh, exchanges of gaze. And this separation between us dissolves. That's because we're putting attention on each other. Attention dissolves boundaries. And what you put attention on becomes part of your being. You take it in. You could say that whatever you put attention on is your food. That's why Thich Nhat Hanh says, you know, if you're eating an orange, but you're focused on your anger, you're actually eating your anger. Mm -hmm. So food could be physical food, it could be thoughts, it could be sensations, it could be stories, it could be many things. Whatever you put your attention on becomes part of you. Attention is the means by which we create ourselves. And then we create ourselves as being somebody who will do something in a certain situation pretty much automatically. There are only very, very rare moments where action springs immediately, instantaneously from the choice of attention. So, for example, if you're driving constantly or living your life and frequently putting attention on the story of there are a lot of terrible people out there, I'm always doing the right thing, so many people are doing the wrong thing, there's something really wrong with these people, etc., etc., etc. If you put your attention on that story, you will create yourself as a person who gives the finger to a motorist at a certain moment. You could say, because if you think, you know, whatever you put your attention on is your food, you know the saying, we are what we eat. So that's another way to look at the self-creating power of attention. Therefore, see in the next couple days we're going to do some reality creation. And self-creation. And the tool we use to do that is attention. At any given moment, various stories will be offered you. Various feelings. The more that you master attention, the more you will be able to empower those stories that create the world that you want to create. So we're going to be doing some exercises today, some activities that are designed to play with attention, to explore attention, and to, to strengthen our attention, and to give us more of the feeling that we choose what to pay attention to. When you start paying attention to different things, you find yourself doing, taking different actions in various situations.